Hey guys, AJ here. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna see how the Surface Pro 3 fares in 2020 as an everyday laptop. What I have here in front of me is a Surface Pro 3 i5 4 gigs with 128 gig SSD. So even back by 2014 standards, it was a mid-range device. But the one special thing about this computer here is that even though it's six years old, it was turned on for the first time yesterday. It's still running the original Windows 8 that it was shipped with. I've done a very quick setup on the device just to make sure that the battery still holds charge. And luckily enough, it seems like it is running perfectly. What we're gonna do now is open this thing up, upgrade it from Windows 8 to Windows 10, install some apps, and then we're gonna play around with it to see how the Surface Pro 3 fares in 2020. All right, so let's get this thing out of its box. Slide off that old school great packaging. Grab the Surface Pro out. Slide this one down. Put the plastic to the side for a second. Oh, it took a second there for it to turn on. There we go, the Windows 8 8.1 uh, screensaver. And importantly, let's grab the Surface Pen out. Twist the back off. Let's put the battery in there. The screen is detecting the pen straight away. So there is no issues with the pen. It's not connected through Bluetooth. Pixel Sense just pairs the pen and the screen together. There's nowhere for the pen to, to magnetize to. That's okay. Let's just grab our, our keyboard. Together. Look at that, like it was made for it. And what we'll do now is upgrade this from Windows 8 to Windows 10 and see how this thing fares in 2020. One week later. So the Pro 3 is fully updated to Windows 10. I've actually been using it now as my main PC for the past week just to really put it through its paces. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you exactly what it's like using the Pro 3 in 2020. We're gonna start from a cold boot and then I'm gonna launch my top five apps for the Surface Pro to show you guys exactly how those apps run on the Surface Pro 3 here. Let's hit that on button and get this thing launched up. The first thing I noticed with the Pro 3 is that how quickly it boots up from a cold boot. And that's all thanks to the SSD inside of here that even by 2020 standards, I think is still really quite fast. I am going to run Nextcam for you guys, which is basically a hardware monitoring software. So we can have a look at how the CPU, the GPU and the RAM are performing and sort of what loads they go under as we're running these programs here. I actually find it's got a great little widget. If you guys think it's handy, I'll put the link in the description down below so you can download it and have a play with it yourself. And the first app we're going to launch is Spotify. So let's just hit that start button, launch Spotify and play some music. So you'll see here that the CPU and the GPU have spiked just a little bit as we launch the app. One thing I did notice with Spotify is that when you first launch it, it is laggy for a couple of seconds, but then it runs quite smoothly. So let's pick Rockstar and let's see how that sounds. CPU is not really under all that much load with one program running. RAM, we're using 2.8 gigs out of the 4 gigs that we have available. And temperature, it's 50 degrees, so it's not all that hot. Let's pause you there. So, like I said, using Spotify at first, it's that little bit laggy as the app loads, but then it's super smooth once it's up and running. The speakers on the Pro 3 aren't going to be the loudest or the basis that you hear from a tablet, but for a device that's six years old, I think they're really, really quite good. The next app we're gonna have a look at is the Microsoft Whiteboard because I think if you've got a pro or any pen enabled device, using the Whiteboard, you can't go past it. It's just a great way of writing down notes. So again, we're gonna hit the Start button, launch our Microsoft Whiteboard app, and I'm gonna keep the other apps running in the background so you can see what sort of progressive load happens to the PC. So you can see if it heats up a bit more, what the RAM looks like when you've got more apps running in the background. The Whiteboard app loaded really quite quickly and even just then as I scrolled down the page, it was really quite smooth. Grab a pen here, just gonna show you how quickly we can sort of jump between the different icons. The ruler, quite smooth. In 2020. My handwriting, really, really messy. 
and we're going to convert that into much neater looking handwriting. That was really, really quite smooth. The app launched quite quickly. The pen, there really wasn't that much lag that you could see. Of course, the more I was using this to write, the more I did notice a bit of lag and the pen tip did actually feel like I was using plastic on glass. It was quite, it was too slippery for long periods of time. But honestly, I was very surprised at how well the pen worked on the Pro 3, especially being used to using newer PCs with better pen technology. I'm writing, I press harder, I press softer. I have more and less ink coming out of the pen. So really impressed with how smooth and responsive the pen and the screen is in the whiteboard app. The pen does have a few buttons here, so if I press the top button, I can use it as an eraser. Press the second button behind it, I can use it to lasso and select tools. So the pen has quite a bit of functionality there. Now let's launch into Drawboard PDF. If you're using a Surface Pro, if you're using a, a touch and pen enabled device, I think you've really got to learn how to use a Surface Pen. So this is just one of their uh, sample PDF documents. It's a couple pages long, and again, you saw the app load up really quite quickly. Counts our CPU and our processor load. I mean, the RAM we're using almost all four gigs now. The CPU isn't under all that much load, and it's still sitting kind of cool at 50 degrees. I'm going to zoom in very quickly. You can see it takes a couple of seconds, then it adjusts the text. If I'm going to do something like highlighting this text with the pen, notice there's that little bit of lag at first, but then it sort of picks itself back up. So I can highlight it, no problem. Grab say the black pen here to circle something, zoom out again, again you have a little bit of lag but something I can definitely learn to deal with. Right now the whiteboard app is working quite well, drawboard PDF is working quite well, our RAM and our CPU is cranking up just that little bit more but still totally usable and totally manageable. Maybe launch the second PDF and again this one's a bit more graphic intense, you can see the CPU jumps up a bit more as it loads it and there is a little bit more lag as it renders but still totally capable of launching this program. Let's grab out another tool, let's go advanced options, and we're gonna highlight this building here. Little bit of lag, but totally manageable. So we've launched Spotify, we've launched Whiteboard, and we've launched Drawboard PDF. We've used 3.2 out of our four gigs of RAM. Um, the CPU is getting a little bit hotter again, Let's go into our fourth app, which is OneNote. We're gonna use OneNote for Windows 10. So again, the store version of the OneNote app. Let's open that up. So testing out the pen, it does actually feel quite good. Um, this is a Pro 3. If you can see that there is very little lag, let's grab out a shape and see how quickly that can draw up that square. You have a tiny bit of lag as it renders. Let's go into shape and Maybe convert that circle, square, diamonds. Imagine if you're taking notes, if you're annotating over something in OneNote, it's really quite responsive. So as a note-taking device, I think it's working really well. You still have that pressure sensitivity. So I press lighter, I press harder, and you can see I'm getting more and more or less ink on the page. The RAM, we've got used 3.3 gigs of that four gigs that we have. Um, the CPU is still sitting at around 50, 51 degrees Celsius. All right, so we're gonna keep these apps running in the background. We're gonna jump over to Microsoft Edge and we're gonna open up a few tabs to see how the PC handles a couple of different tabs being run as well as having apps running in the background. So opening Edge, I'd recommend you keeping an eye on the CPU and the RAM load. So you can see here, launching a couple of tabs, the CPU load is spiked up quite high. The temperature we've gone from 50 to about 70 degrees and the RAM we've almost maxed out our RAM and this is only opening and using three sites and the one thing I found was that once the fan kicked off it just starts getting louder and louder and it doesn't really drop itself back down to close all the programs again but in terms of performance the computer is still actually really quite snappy. Open the start menu let's actually scroll over and maybe open up PowerPoint and that fan has just started really kicking off. And then let's go grab a Word document. 
So now we've got a Word document open, a PowerPoint document open, and we've pretty much maxed out our RAM. Once we start loading and working on these docu documents, I think we've pushed this PC as far as it can go in terms of multitasking. But you can see here with a couple of tabs, a couple of programs, and a couple of apps running, it's actually still really quite buttery smooth, which I am super impressed and stoked about, especially the fact that it is a six-year-old mid-range Surface Pro 3. All right, so the standout feature for the Pro 3 has to be how quickly it launched into Windows 10 and how snappily it still launched those apps. The other thing that really surprised me was how well the Surface Pen worked on some of those apps. I didn't expect much from the Pro 3 and the Pen, and I was pleased to see how well all those apps and how well the pen was working. As you saw, I was trying to put it through its paces and launch a couple of different apps and web browsers just to see at what point would it start lagging. We didn't see much lag at all. There were some times throughout the past week where I was pushing it a little bit harder and it did start to slow down quite a bit. When it comes to the bad side of the Pro 3, the two things that stand out for me would have to be the battery life. I'd be lucky to get between two and a half and three hours. And the other thing would have to be the heat and the sound of the fan. But for a six year old PC, I can be a little bit more forgiving. Overall, the Pro 3 in 2020 far exceeded my expectations. I was expecting it to be a lot slower, a lot laggier. As you saw, it handled my top five favorite apps of Windows 10. It handled some basic internet browsing. It's still a very decent device in 2020. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more of my content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.